Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and this week's nursery tour. So we're going to take a little jaunt through the nursery and show you what is growing, blooming and thriving and give you ideas of what you can do uh, in your garden right now. Of course, we are in Dallas, North Carolina, a zone 8A. We are a garden center open for all of you sweet people to come visit us beginning this week. We have now officially begun our normal operating hours. So from this day forward, we will be open Wednesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So Wednesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We will keep those uh, dates, those days until we close, which will be what sometime in December. So come on and come see us. Uh, let's see. So we've got that. Uh, tulips are blooming here at the nursery oh my gosh y'all so much fun so it's been really fun to watch how the tulips like progress in their blooms uh, depending on where they are and how much sun exposure they get uh, we have the this is the super collider blend from our friends at color blends all of our bulbs that we planted this year came from color blends the Super Collider, as you can see, has um, gorgeous double yellows, and then it's got a bright like fire engine red, and then a nice deep rich purple. My kids, I'm not, maybe I haven't failed them as a parent, but they were like, Mama, did you know that tulips open and close with the sun? And I was like, yeah, I did know that. So it's really fun. Uh, whether your kids are, you know, nine or 19, there's always something fun for them in the garden. These are developing and opening up. It is interesting because that corner, it has opened up first and then they're kind of like progressing this way. Also in the signature garden, you will notice that this is the Miss Confection blend. She too is opening up. Uh, Miss Confection is in the interior part of the garden. It's a really fun one because it is like a deep pink, dare say a little bit of red in there. And with, it starts out like a creamy yellow and then matures to a white. Megan and I were just talking, Megan's our, our middle daughter and uh, she's the resident artist. And so she's my uh, design buddy when we were talking and uh, we're going to make sure that we have a, a really good plan for next year on how we plan this space. Because when I ordered these bulbs last summer, um, we didn't have the final design nailed down on the garden. So it's a little bit hodgy podgy still gorgeous uh, but next year every year we improve right so the garden is slowly waking up of course you remember that we planted all of the sh uh, shrubs and the perennials in the garden uh, back in would that be like november i think it was and things are starting to wake up which is so much fun you can see like for example the salvias right there's even a little bud on there that was this is the pink perfusion salvia my absolute favorite perennial salvia so it is waking up we have uh oh even hey jerry the tuscan sun the heliopsis it's waking up so this is a heliopsis like a sunflower first time i'm seeing that that it is waking up as well loves it hot so that's really fun and exciting to know that that's waking up um of course the serendipity alliums really just a great deer rabbit resistant perennial these are so happy they're alliums they are critter resistant because alliums are onions and so if you were to really rub it even when you rub it you don't really smell it it's when you start to break the the leaves that it smells just like an onion oh the barberries are waking up so the citrus this is citrus sunjoy citrus so it's got growth on those Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, if you're not, if you are in a warmer zone, right? So we're Piedmont, North Carolina, get out in your garden because every day, literally something else is waking up. Like I see flocks is waking up so much fun. So speaking of all of these things waking up, look, look at this, Jerry. The, um, these are the Perfecto Mundo. This is orange, I believe it has buds. Do you see that? All that bright green. Oh, and we have a dog running through. Um, so yeah, even the azaleas have new growth. They have buds forming on it. Oh, so exciting. 
Now, I'm all about full exposure here and like just telling you how it is. We did plant this in, it was later in the season when we planted it. And we put dianthus on the four outer corners and almost immediately when we put it in, it did not like it at all. So this is the funky fuchsia and I've lost a good number of them. I've, there's a saying with the, in gardening world, if you're not killing a plant, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> well, I guess I'm trying pretty good then. Um, so we had some that got lost. Like you can see, so every corner had three and I've lost this one. I know that this one is gone because it doesn't have that green foliage and like it's very, it's not rooted in there. Sometimes it's the gardener's fault. It's not that this is a bad plant. It's that it could have been planted at the wrong time. Um, the roots didn't get well established before the cold hit. There's a number of things that can happen. Just know even professional gardeners, we lose plants. So don't be hard on yourself. There is grace in gardening uh, for sure. So all of that's happening. Before we know it, we're gonna be planting annuals in here. But it is a great time for you. Uh, this is the perfect time of year. As we're leaving winter behind and we're going into spring, this is the perfect time to be adding those shrubs, those trees, those perennials to your garden. Um, in fact, just not even what an hour, maybe an hour ago, we got a great selection of trees straight from Oregon. Um, so on this order, we have Japanese maples, we have dogwoods, we have river birches. Um, I think those are the main categories. So this is what we call a B and B, ball and burlap. These were grown in Oregon and they were field grown and then they were dug up from the field. They're wrapped in burlap and then that way you can take them and plant them directly into your landscape. As an FYI, B and B's tend to be heavier than a container plant because this is native soil that is attached to it. Um, but these are beautiful trees that are dormant. They're get, beginning to wake up. Like this is a, somebody told me how to pronounce this and I'm just gonna butcher it. So I'm gonna let Jerry show you the, um, the plant tag. Um, there we go. So it is waking up because I can see the little leaf swells on it. So you know that this tree is alive and happy because of those, all those little swells are where the leaves are and they're gonna be. So you can see like, here's a paper bark maple. Um, they are still wrapped up. Megan said they look like they're decorated for Christmas because of the twine. This is for shipping purposes. So we will come in here and cut them free and let them open up. But we've got like the Emperor One uh, maple. Like I said, we've got the river birch in there, not river birch, uh, paper bark maple. You know that because it is shedding its skin rather on there. Uh, dogwoods, so this is the summer gold dogwood beautiful tree nice and healthy and happy it too has swells where those um, flowers are going to be so it is doing well and these are on average i would say what a five to six foot tree on average that's the size of it right oh right now yeah 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 right now the size of them right now, not mature size. I mean, like literally right now. So we'll get these all sorted and unwrapped. There's, oh, the fire glow, that's a maple. Uh, yeah, so lots of different options for you if you're interested in those. Of course, tis the season for um, hydrangeas. We've got wygillas, they are waking up. Oh my gosh, Jerry, look at this. These are the beyond pink caryopteris, look. Oh my word. No, it's not. It's the wrong. Y'all, I was about to freak out. I was like, how is that beyond paint waking up? It's not. The tag blew in it. It is the Wygelias. So they are waking up. This is Vino Verde. So Vino Verde, see all that new green growth right there? Right? I was thinking, how in the world is that plant waking up? Then we've got over here, um, yeah, so the Vino Verde is going to be really fun. We had this in the privacy berm. It's gonna be three to five feet tall and wide. This is neat because it has a, like a bicolor of a leaf, like a nice dark green and then almost a black. So these guys are waking up. They will, of course, flower and be beautiful. So sorry for that little, uh, the Beyond Pink is right here. 
which is not waking up. They are very much dormant because the Beyond Paint love it hot. So if you have a Caryopteris, because I was just talking to one of our, our regular customers, Brian, and he was asking me if my Beyond Paint was waking up. And one is showing a little bit of green growth at the very bottom, um, but the other two are not. They're planted right beside each other. So if you have Caryopteris from last year, just hold on, don't do anything, just wait, because they do love it hot for sure. Um, it is gonna be azalea season before we know it. So if you want to add azaleas to your garden, now is a great time to do it. We have um, some encores. We've got some of the proven winners, Perfecto Mundos available. So you can add those. Rose season is about to be upon us. If you are interested in roses, now is the time to do it, my friends. So we've got the drift roses, and then we've got more of the landscape roses. So these are from proven winners. Like we have um, the Oso oh Easy Italian Ice. You have got the Rise Up Ringo, the Reminiscent Pink, um, Reminiscent Coral, all sorts, Reminiscent Crema. I'm looking at my tags here. So your roses are probably waking up, coming out of that winter dormancy. And before we know it, they're gonna be putting on flowers. So if you're interested in adding them to your garden, this would be a perfect time to go ahead and do that, absolutely. We have some of the forsythias are starting to put on some of their flowers. Uh, forsythias, of course, are yellow bells. That's what we knew them as growing up. So this is show off. It is called show off because they have the biggest flowers I have ever seen on a forsythia. And they will just be covered from tip to tip with flowers. Also the quince, the quince is waking up. This is probably the prettiest one right now. This is the double take scarlet. Uh, this is the one that's the most advanced. So if you are looking to have um, that gorgeous, nice, thick, happy, double red bloom on it, you can see that it's literally blooming from the very base and then it will go all the way up the stems on them. Of course, if you want to prune your quince, the great time to do it is after it flowers, right? And quince is hardy in zones, it tends to be more cold tolerant in zones five to nine. This will be four to five feet tall and wide, and it is a full sun plant. Um, so quince is really a fun addition for early, early spring color. So that is a great way to add color to your garden. Let's see, we're gonna go this way. All right. Um, we've got, of course, this past weekend, we had tons of people buying shrubs. Like that was probably, I think, the number one category that folks were buying because you want to get your shrubs in the ground, your shrubs and your trees in the ground before the summer heat hits. That's the problem that we deal with in the South. Get them in in the you know, late fall, winter, late winter, early, early spring, so the roots get really well established before the heat of the summer hits. Still the uh, shades of pink viburnum, just so popular. This is gonna be a four to five foot tall and wide evergreen viburnum, nice fragrant flowers on it. Just a really neat plant. I actually did go ahead and grab two that they're gonna go somewhere in the chicken coop garden. I don't know where, but we have two. Um, speaking of trees, red buds. It is about to be red bud season here in North Carolina. Red buds are a native tree. You will see them when you're driving down the road. If you're in the passing by just some natural woods, if you see kind of that like pink flowers straight on the stems of a tree, that is a red bud. So this is a rising sun red bud. It still does the beautiful flowers. And if you see, they are literally coming out of the bark, right? So these are the little flower buds. They will open up and they will come all along the, um, the stems of the tree. But the rising sun is neat because when the buds disappear, then the leaves open up, nice big heart shaped, and you have all this great, really pretty color the colors of a rising sunset or sunrise rather um, on the tree as they mature they turn a green but on the new leaves are just those really vibrant yellows and golds and oranges this is going to be cold hardy to a zone five sun to part shade 
10 to 15 feet tall and wide. Beautiful. If you remember at the house, we have the forest pansy bed. So the forest pansy is a red bud. Um, it gets, I think, a little bit bigger than the rising sun, but kind of give you an idea. As it grows and develops, you can come in and underplant with a great shade garden. Um, we did have people buying annuals. Uh, we are slowly condensing and pulling trays out because folks are they are just itching to get some color, um, whether they have like, you know, heated space that they can put them in or what have you. Um, you saw me uh, earlier this week, I believe, went ahead and planted up my very first containers uh, and, and I use these cool weather annuals. So especially this table, um, even like some of your super bells and your super tunias can go ahead. I chose these because they are blooming these are Nemesias right here. You have the Aramance Mulberry and then the Sensatia Coconut. Great source for your pollinators. They smell divine. I, oh, look, we even have a little honeybee. So here we have it on the, uh, the Laguna. This is the compact blue with eye. Look, talking about pollinators. This little girl, I tell you what, she wins the gold star of the day. She showed up right on time. Um, but this is just a beautiful, really nice, mounded, compact plant. Great, cool weather. That's why they're blooming right now. Is because even, yes, they're in a greenhouse, they're a little advanced, but they can handle these cool temperatures. This week especially is super mild. Jerry's leaving the greenhouse open at night, so they are available. The White Knight Alyssum, we have it, uh, both the White Knight and the Violet Knight right here. Oh my gosh. If you're familiar with Wisteria, I think that's what it, this reminds me of, is the, the fragrance of Wisteria. It has a lovely fragrance. It trails. You can see that White Knight is going to be the most vigorous one. Uh, the Violet Knight is a little bit more compact. It still trails, but it's not so woo -hoo, crazy like the White Knight. So these are, again, I put these, the White Knight went outside in one of the containers, so you can do that. <gasps> Look, we have our very first Bright Lights Purple. Look at that. What a cutie patootie. So these are also known as African daisies, osteospernum. They have these really sweet daisy-like flowers on them. This happens to be uh, the Bright Lights Purple. I was doing the containers, I'm gonna back Jerry up here a little bit. I did the containers on the patio and I did the Bright Lights Horizon Sunset. At first though, I was thinking of doing the purple with it. And you absolutely could. It's just going to be more of a, uh, like the same family, right? Of colors. So you can choose whichever one you want to do, uh, but it, that would be pretty too. The bright lights purple with the coconut nevesia. So pretty, right? Nice contrast on those. And then, um, so happy to see that little bloom in there. The petunias are starting to bloom, so we've got some of those. I don't want to pass up, though, the shade perennials. We've had folks, literally, that have been waiting for the queen of hearts, um, Brunera, Brunera, Brunaria, Brunera, I don't know, y'all. Pronunciation, please, can get me. Um, they have been waiting on this plant since last year. So we have queen of hearts. I don't have jack of diamonds. I have queen of hearts. That's what's available. Um, great shade plant that is going to be deer resistant, rabbit resistant because it is hairy. It's got a hairy, tough texture. Goes great with your hostas, your astilbes, all of those great things. Does beautiful true blue flowers and it's going to be hardy in zones three to eight. Definitely goes in your shade garden though. So if you're coming to shop, it's in the greenhouse. All right, so it's in the greenhouse and it's right over here. Um, Let's see, we're gonna come this way and then swing out because I wanted to pass you by some of the petunias that are blooming. We have the mini Vista Scarlet. This was so popular last year. Like we could not keep um, this petunia in stock. People were just gobbling it up. So if you love that red, that's a great one. We have tons of them. Oh, look, here's our very first Royal Velvet Bud. We've got two of those right there. Royal Velvet, of course, is that nice, rich, rich purple. And then the Super Bells have started to bloom. 
Um, the royal velvet would pair beautifully with the Super Bell's Blue Moon Punch. That would be nice. Coral Sun was a really popular one this past weekend. People were, were loving that. The pinks, the purples. I love the currants, like the black currant punch. They're just such a sweet, nice, kind of interesting color to them. Really nice. All right, let's move outside real quick because I want to show you um, as far as perennials. We've got, um, if you're looking to add more perennials to your sun garden to have early color, Amsonia is going to be a great option for you. So this is storm cloud. Now I will say this Amsonia is going to be a little bit more advanced in my gardens. They're just starting to pop up because we planted these this year and they started out in the greenhouse. They're a little advanced. Okay. Um, but you will see those nice true blue star shaped flowers. The flowers themselves are small, but they're in those clusters. So they make a nice big presence. They are a one time bloomer. Most, per most perennials tend to bloom one time and then they're done, but you get beautiful foliage the rest of the season, hardy in zones four to nine, and is definitely going to be in that full to part sun um, environment. Now over here, Jerry and I were sitting on the front porch yesterday afternoon, right? Front porch, house is right over there. And I was like, Jerry, what is that over at the nursery? Do you see that? Is that my imagination? And he was like, no. So this is the, uh, what, Star Magnolia. Uh, gorgeous, big, huge, pure white flowers on it. It is so pretty. It is literally glowing. I saw, I mean, that's like, I don't know, 200, 200 yards away. Um, so we currently have two of them. I don't think that there is a slight fragrance. So there's two of them that we have and um, they are in full bloom. So the star magnolias are great if you want to put them kind of out by, their, by themselves. Sometimes planting directly underneath these um, can be challenging because of their root system. I added one to my garden last year. I, I need to go check it. It's kind of behind the garden shed. But sometimes, so my, my great master gardener friends were telling me that sometimes planting underneath these can be challenging because their root system and it makes it really hard to get in there. So this is a great specimen by itself out somewhere but you this has been out all winter and it is blooming now so just beautiful um the perennials right so we've got perennials that are coming up you got daylilies and you've got your dianthus all sorts of wonderful things um it is definitely a go time whether you're looking to add your trees your shrubs your perennials cautiously do some of your cool weather annuals uh, just be prepared if you put an annual out that you either need to bring it in or really well protect it because you know we're going to get another hard freeze just just no don't even lie to yourself it is going to happen so if you plant an annual in the ground or a container be prepared to protect it on those more freezing nights that eventually will come so just be prepared for that i know that i am um, but yes come see us from nine to three wednesdays through saturdays we would love to see you um, if you have any questions or you just kind of want to look around the garden center uh, go to gardeningwithcreekside.com we have all sorts of information for you there and you can explore and just kind of get to know us we have an events page so you can look at that and understand what is happening here at the garden center but i think Oh, Unique Stone. Let me back that up. Unique Stone. If you're looking to place an order for Unique Stone, May 8th is going to be the last day that we're taking special orders for the July arrival. So you can um, send questions or your orders to orders at gardeningwithcreekside.com or when you come here to the nursery, you can go ahead and prepay for your piece get exactly what you want and the exact color that you want and it will arrive in the July order. So May 8th is the cutoff for that July order. So we can certainly help you and quote you pieces if you have questions about that. But we're just enjoying this very spring-like weather. It is stunning, it is beautiful, and we're loving every minute of it. As always, we so appreciate you. You have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.